Hey guys, it's Jim Bowles with Co-op Motor Works and uh, Patreon with Motorhome Rehab Ranch. And uh, today we're going to talk about cruise controls. Now everybody knows Rostra has the 50-1223, I think, universal cruise control, and it's all up, down, speed, and all that stuff. It's all cool. And if we're going to put a bunch of money in the motorhome, of course, we're going to do that. But there are a lot of motorhomes out there like this one. Frightfully original. Nobody has touched this thing. And tucked right in here is one of these. And there's three wires going to it. It's right here. Two seven sixteenths bolts holding it. Oh, hey there. We got cats over here. And then over here, if you go to the carburetor and you follow this chain steel rod or whatever comes over to hey there one of these <laughs> vacuum diaphragm <laughs> you gonna help me with this i think elegant would probably help us both huh so this is the diaphragm now this one yep it's good well reasonably good yeah, you think so? Okay. Let's see. You, you you hold it in. You hold your hand on the finger on that. Yeah, it holds. So this, this one will work. Now, if you have these two devices still in your motorhome, okay, what I'm getting ready to talk about is how to find out if these work, <laughs> connect them, and how to maintain it because to be honest with you real original cruise control this thing here reminded me of a, of a of a really good high school science project okay really it does i mean it's cute it's got this thing that spins around and when you push the button it grabs something and it goes around and spins around with it it'd be wonderful to watch that in action you know but uh uh it it does work you know i mean it's not a, a mission critical system. I mean, the worst you got to do is put your foot back on the pedal, you know. So, you know, these things may work. They're very reliable and they're still being supported. Yeah. Let's go inside because it's hot out here and the cats are starting to come all over the place. Um, and we'll, uh, let's talk a little bit about how to hook it up and how to check it out. All right. You going to be happy with that? All right. Whew, that's better. <clears throat> it's still Florida. It's still summer. <clears throat> so, as you saw in the coach, this is a cruise control transducer. All right? All the stuff's in here. Okay? And then this controls the diaphragm. Puts air to it, sucks it in, comes out. Now, Diaphragms are made in a couple different ways. The earlier ones had this metal bracket and a bar running through it. Then the later ones had a little bit of a chain and then a, bar, a pipe running through the a chain running through a pipe. Uh, whichever one you have, you just put your finger on the back of it. Now this one, it lost its thing here and there's a hole in the diaphragm. So watch. Doesn't hold real good. Probably could fix it and hook something to it. It may be worth it. I've not found another source for these. Okay. All right. So let's talk about connecting this stuff together. All right. First, the vacuum lines. Okay. Looking down into the engine compartment, this is the top of the transducer right here. Okay. And there are three wires going into it. We'll talk about these in a minute. Three wires, and you see here it's got a ground wire. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, since she's up here, let's talk about these. You can see that they're labeled well, upside down. This one's light. In other words, this one engages the light when it comes on. This one engage. When you hit that one, it engages. And when you hit this one it goes to hold okay so there's the three the three wires and ground all right 
Now electrically to check this, you pull all three off. It's like this. This one, if you feed 12 volts to this, the dash light will come on and says cruise. Boing. Okay. Next, turn on your key. One of these two will be hot. Okay, one of these two. Push the button in halfway, and the other one will be hot. Okay? In other words, one will be hot, one will be ground. Push the button in halfway, the other one will be hot, and that one will be ground. If that's the case, electrically it works. Complete. Okay? Well, that means the cruise control uh, uh, and the switch, the button, all that works. Now, I'm not saying the transducer works. I'm saying to it. All right. So, we got that done. So, we're going to have these three wires right here. The light, engage, and hold. Got those two connectors. That's all your electrical hookups. That's it. If that doesn't work, you can go up to the dash and coming out of the steering column is uh, a ribbon wire, real thin wire. It goes to another plug. Check that to see if it's got power or check the fuse. You know, could be the fuse. But uh, anyway, electrically, that's it. Now, next thing. And we're going to use the green. We want to control this diaphragm. Okay? So... We're going to come out of, there's two ports on the side, a large one and a small one. And then there's a port on the front, a large port here. Okay. So what we're going to do, what you'll find is there will be a connection, vacuum connection from here to here. And then this connection, this vacuum line, will go down to here. And behind here will be a T. It will be hooked up there. And then you will have a line coming off, going in the uh, coach. It comes into the brake pedal underneath the dash, the brake pedal. What that is, is when you push the brake pedal, it opens the vacuum pops the vacuum, releases this, absolutely shuts it off. So there's your path for your vacuum. Now, there's only one other port. Let's use uh, blue. You need to put vacuum to the thing, right? So you get your motor over here. Uh, anyway, here's your motor. And coming off the motor, you need a vacuum line. hooks to there. That hooks to the small port, the small port right there. Large port, again, is going to here and then going to the diaphragm. Make sense? And believe it or not, that's it. That's the whole connection. Okay? Now, when I say the whole connection, of course, you've got cables here. You've got a speedometer cable that goes from the small one down to the transmission and then this big one here goes up to the speedometer. Um, uh, and, and then you've got your electrical connections that I told you about over here. All right. Now, let's talk about this cruise transducer. This, everything is in this thing. It's an integral part. All right. So on this bracket, Sits in the firewall, is bolted to the firewall, two seven sixteenths bolts. Right? If all of your your uh, wire, all your plumbing checks out in the diaphragm holes, I'm gonna push it, all that works, okay? The system should work. If it doesn't, it's this. Okay? Now, <laughs> if you go to the manual, they have a detailed breakout of how to rebuild this thing. Are you kidding me? No, don't do that. Matter of fact, don't do that to help save the community. Because you can buy one professionally rebuilt from A1 Cardone. 
and the part number is 36-102. Now, some other people said, why well, don't make that anymore? 36-102. They're not going to have it on the, on the shelf at 7-Eleven or anything. But A1 Cardone does produce it. How do I know it? Because we've been supplying them cores for you guys. And I don't want you to dig into yours when you give them a core because I want it to be in good shape so they can professionally rebuild it for other people to use. Come on, have a heart. Don't rip the thing up in pieces, put it in a bag and give it to the guy the core. Don't do that. These things are a little bit complicated and you know, the first thing you do, you usually screw it up. I mean, Henry Ford had five circuit tires on his first car, right? So let's be good to these things. There's not many left. Matter of fact, A1 car done stopped. And uh, my supplier told me about that because they didn't have any cores. We had 16 cores at that time. So we put them back in business. So I'm hanging on to all of these cores. And I, I wish you would too, because if your supplier comes up with one, believe me, that core is worth money. Big bucks. Okay? Uh, it's, like, it's like buying a differential and not giving them a core. Not happening. Okay? Now these diaphragms... This is the one part that you can't buy, okay? The part number for this is gone, okay? So, and they're pretty resilient. Uh, if they are, you know, clean the, clean the rubber up. It's mounted to the, um, to the bell housing with this bracket. It's got this nut on the back that holds it. By the way, this nut is on their harder than woodpecker lips. I don't know what kind of torque they put on that, three-quarter inch wrench and you will go ow anyway that's the bracket if you still have the bracket but you're missing this so you can go on the hunt any GM car in the 70s uh, use the same thing you know and the way to test it again is push it in hold your finger on this works okay this is the integral part <clears throat> You know, some hot rod or something may make those. I don't know. Um, I really didn't look into it because, of course, we put in the new rosters and stuff. And, and if you want a nice cruise control and you're missing these parts, believe me, it's a, I think it's a 50-1223. Uh, when you go to the roster website, you'll see it's a universal cruise control. You're going to pick the controller, the one, the stock controller, and you need to have a what's called a pulse generator. Pulse generator goes... <clears throat> in place of this okay oh by the way uh, if you're if you need cables okay <clears throat> ATP makes the cables your upper cable connects here goes to the speedometer that one is a Y810 okay now if you don't care about cruise control or anything you can take that new cable and run directly to the transmission if you want okay the lower cable, if you're going to keep this thing or you're going to put a pulse generator in it, which is a little round thing, it's not a big deal. Uh, that's a Y802, okay? ATP brand, Y810 for the uh, upper and Y802 for the lower, all right? So um, cables are available. Now, if you push the button, as Mary told you, electrical, if you push the buttons, you don't get any power, go check the fuse. If the fuse is good, if your control switch is bad, you can't get one of those either. But they are almost every one of them is good. Um, but that's another part that if you have that, <clears throat> you may want to get a Rostra. Um, and that's a very cool machine. I've put them in for God 15 years. You know. One thing you don't do though, you're pulling a hill, turn it off. So pulling a hill going to Crestview. Guy's flying in to pick up his motorhome. I'm rolling along there, man. Nice coach. Cruise control on, just kicked back. Went to pull a hill. Whoop, whoop. He just floored it. Ripped all the belts off. So here I am. The guy's flying in. I'm sitting there with a couple of wrenches trying to put belts on this thing. Don't do that with a roster. Trust me on that one. All right. Well, look. I hope this helps you. I've had some discussions this week and I saw a thread on Facebook about cruise controls and what to do and there, you know, people weren't really coming up with any good answers or anything. And you know, there's, people aren't spending, you know, there's, there's not a guru for cruise controls or something, you know what I mean? 
is not one of those things that people spend hours messing with. And this, you know, the original one, it's not too bad. If, if all, everything works, if, if all your parts work, it is worth buying one of these. How much are they? I don't know. Maybe 150, 200 bucks, something like that. I, I, I don't know. But if everything works, and it actually works, but then maybe it speeds up or slows down, yes. You could look in the manual, show you to slow it down, speed it up. Invest. Buy, buy a rebuilt cruise control. Take yours, your transducer. Take yours, give it to the man, wrap it in plastic. And let's keep these things going because they are kind of cool. I'm using one on my five pack. <laughs> All right, look, thanks for the time. Thanks for you guys being ranch hands. And if, you, if you're wondering what that's all about, listen, if I give you this information for free and you appreciate it, uh, it will come back. I believe that. And if, if I'm doing things that's helping you, return that and help me. All right? That's what this is all about. Every, all the access, most everything, we're getting ready to do some, some uh, pay uh, 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 instructional, deep instructional things. But the, the site's open. And I want people to have this information. And I want the, you enthusiasts that are picking these things up. I want you to do this. This week, I had two guys um, just bought their coach. They're all excited, young guys. Just before we got off, I was talking to uh, Rob Taylor. Hey, Rob, over in the UK, you know, he's got his going. Uh, and then, and then uh, I had Fred uh, just bought one that we worked on 10 years ago. Um, and it's really exciting. He's excited about it. He's going to put it back together. I'm so happy. Fred, thank you. All right, guys, you stewards be good. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.